In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve some common problems that you may encounter when taking the GED test. We're going to go over some tips and strategies that you can employ to solve these problems. So let's start with this one. What is the sum of the two fractions shown below? To add two fractions, the denominators of those two fractions must be the same. Right now they're different, so we need to make them the same. The least common multiple, or LCM, of 4 and 5 is 20. If you add 4 continuously, you'll get these numbers. And if you add 5 to each previous number, you'll get this. 20 is the least common multiple of 4 and 5. You can also get it by just multiplying 4 and 5 together. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the second fraction by 4 over 4 and the first one by 5 over 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 4 is 8. And 4 times 5 is 20. So now that these two are the same, we can add the numerators of the two fractions. 15 plus 8 is 23. So the answer is 23 over 20. But we don't see that here. So we need to convert the improper fraction into a mixed number. It's improper because the numerator exceeds the value of the denominator. 20 goes into 23 one time. So I'm going to break down 23 into 20 plus 3. Because 20 plus 3 is 23. Now, 20 divided by 20 is 1. So you get 1 plus 3 over 20, which you can write that as a mixed number, 1 and 320. So the correct answer for this example is answer choice B. Now let's move on to our next example problem. What is the value of the expression shown below when x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2? Go ahead and try this problem if you want to. So this is basically a substitution problem. We need to replace x with 3 and we need to replace y with 2. And then we need to evaluate the expression using order of operations. Perhaps you remember this in school, PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So first we need to work with the things inside the parentheses, followed by the exponents, and then you have multiplication and division, and finally addition and subtraction comes last. 3 squared, that's 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2 is 6, times 4, that's 24. Now, 2 to the third power, that's basically you're multiplying three twos together. So when you see exponents, you're dealing with repeat multiplication. 2 to the third is 8. 2 times 9 is 18. And 18 minus 24 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 8 is 2. So this is the final answer, answer choice A. Now, let's move on to our next problem, number 3. Which of the following values of x could be a solution to the equation shown below? Now, before we continue this problem, I do want to mention something, and that is that for those of you who want more practice problems like this, a lot more practice problems, check out the links in the description section below, because I have another video on YouTube that has like a ton of multiple choice problems like this on uh, GED math. So if that interests you, uh, just check out the description and then you can find the link to that video plus some other videos that will teach you the concepts of math that you need to learn. So I think that's going to be very helpful um, if you decide to take a look at those links. But let's get back to this problem. So how can we find the value of x that will be a solution to this equation? There's two different ways we can do this. One way, or uh, one tip that you could use, is you can plug in the answers to see which one works. Let's try answer choice A. So we're going to replace x with 5. And we're going to see if the left side has the same value as the right side of the equation. If the, value, if the values are the same, then you have the solution. If the values are different, then it's not a correct solution. 5 squared is 25, and 7 times 5 is 35. 25 plus 12 is 37. 37 does not equal 35, which means answer choice A 
is not a solution. So let's try another one. Let's try answer choice B. So let's replace X with four. And let's see what's going to happen. Four squared is 16. And seven times four is 28. 16 plus 12 is 28. So the left side matches with the right side, which means that answer choice B is a solution to the equation. Now let me show you another way to get the answer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move the 7x from the right side to the left side. On the right side, it's positive 7x. But when I switch sides, it's going to be a negative 7x on the other side. So we're going to have x squared minus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. Now in this format, we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. And what we can do is we can factor this trinomial to get the solution. In order to factor it, here's what you need to do. Find two numbers that multiply to 12, but add to the middle coefficient of negative 7. We know that, well first let's find a list of numbers that multiply to 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. 1 plus 12 is 13, 2 plus 6 is 8. Let's write it out. But 3 plus 4 is 7. Now we need negative 7, not positive 7. So we could use negative 3 and negative 4 because they add up to minus 7. So to factor it, it's going to be x minus 3 times x minus 4. Now what you need to do is set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So what we're going to do here is add 3 to both sides. And so we're going to get x is equal to 3. Now for the other one, we're going to add 4 to both sides. Negative 4 plus 4 cancels, so we get x is equal to 4. And this is the answer that we do have listed, answer choice B. Answer A is a, I mean, x equals 3 is another answer, but we don't have that listed. And it's not the same as x equals negative 3. So even though we get two answers, only one of the two answers is listed in our solution. So B is the correct answer for this problem. Now let's move on to our next problem. How can we simplify this expression? What would you do? The first thing we need to do is distribute the exponents. Just as a side review, when you raise one exponent to another, you need to multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. So what this means is that you have 3 x squared together. And when you multiply a variable, you add the exponents. 2 plus 2 plus 2 gives you 6. So when raising one exponent to another exponent, you have to multiply the exponents. The exponent of 2 is 1. The exponent of 3 is 1. So we're going to multiply 1 by 4. So we're going to get 2 to the 4. 2 by 4. So that's going to be a to the 8. And then 3 times 4 is 12. So b to the 12. And then let's distribute the exponent for the second one. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Now, 2 to the 4th power, we're multiplying 4 2's together. 2 times 2 is 4, and then 4 times 4 is 16. So we can replace 2 to the 4th with 16. a to the 8th times a to the 6th. We need to add the exponents. 8 plus 6 will give us 14 b to the 12 times b to the 4th, we're going to add 12 plus 4, and that's going to give us 16. 3 squared, that's 3 times 3, that's 9. Now we need to multiply 16 by 9. So let's do this the old-fashioned way. 9 times 6 is 54. Write the 4, carry the 5. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5, that's 14, so we get 144. The final answer in this example is 144, a to the 14th, b to the 16th. So that's how you could simplify algebraic expressions. Now there's something else I do want to mention. So when you multiply 
variables with different exponents, you need to add the exponents. 3 plus 4 is 7. When you raise one exponent to another exponent, you need to multiply. 3 times 4 is 12. And when you're dividing, you need to subtract the exponents. 9 minus 3 is 6. So those are some basic rules of exponents that you want to be familiar with. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out the links in the description section below if you want more practice problems.